Hey, this is your boy Bob TV. How you doing today? Uh, welcome to Freedom on Fire. Huh. I just found out there's a focus group, a think tank, that is paying $20 million, 20 freaking million dollars, to find out why Hillary Clinton lost to Trump. I can do it for $2. But let me read the article <laughs> real quick. Because, look, you know I just did a series, and I'm not finished, called Dumb DNC Mistakes. The whole purpose of me doing that series is to let you know these are the mistakes that the Democratic National Committee made in this election that caused us a Trump election. They want to blame everything but themselves. My mom say, hey, oftentimes, nine times out of ten, it's your fault why you didn't win. Stop looking at the other team. Maybe they were just better than you. But look at yourself. What went wrong in your camp? And they were doing everything they can to blame it on everybody. Russia, Comey, you know, uh, WikiLeaks, you name it. Uh, a frog that went across the road. It don't matter. They were blaming it on everybody. But um, this think tank is going to spend $20 million could go toward fixing the water system in Flint, Michigan. It can go toward education. It can go toward building a new um, dog park or something. But $20 million on something that's so freaking obvious? But let me read the article. Give me a moment. All right. So this is from Politico magazine. I'm going to put the spectacles on and read it. Uh, don't play the, pay the glare no mind up here, all right? All right. So Politico magazine. Democratic Party rethinks gets $20 million injections. So somebody's going to inject $20 million to find out what went wrong. Centrist think tank Third Way is launching a campaign to help Democrats reconnect with voters who abandoned them. Really? Abandon them? Really? Somebody abandoned you? Like you own them? Like you're married to them? You're in a relationship with them? Like they're your child and, and you're the mama or you, they're your mama and you're the child? They're abandoning you? Really? Get out of here with this stuff. All right. This is by Annie Carney. It says, hoping to help Democrats recover from what is dubbed the party's worst electoral position since the Civil War, a centrist think tank is launching a $20 million campaign to study how the party lost its way and offer a new economic agenda for moving forward. Man, I would have told you for $5 worth of food stamps what happened. It don't take all that. But let me, let me keep going. <laughs> Think Tank Third Way on Tuesday is set to launch New Blue, a campaign to help Democrats reconnect with the voters who have abandoned the party. No, let me stop you right there. The party abandoned the voters. The party abandoned the voters. The party has gone central right, looking like Republicans, catering to corporations and throwing the American people under the bus. And the American people are tired of that crap. And they said, no, no, no. Either I'm going to go with somebody else, but I'm not going to go with these people who keep screwing us for lobbyist money and for all this PAC money that's coming in our pockets. So stop this people abandoning you crap. Nobody abandoning you. You abandon the people. The money will be spent on conducting extensive research. Extensive? <laughs> this stuff is surface level, baby. You ain't got to go dig deep to find out what happened. I'm going to tell you what happened. Um, the money will be spent to conduct extensive research, reporting, and polling in the Rust Belt states that once formed the Blue Wall, but which voted for President-elect Donald Trump last November. The goal is to help start a top-to-top, -to -top, well, top-to-bottom rethink for the Democratic Party, tossing out the old model that assumed Democrats from state legislatures on up to the Oval Office could count on winning majority majorities simply because of the country's changing demographic. The think tank plans to launch a deep dive study of blue to red districts like Macomb County, Michigan, where voters flipped from supporting President Barack Obama four years ago to voting for Trump. Let me stop there for a second. You hear that? It wasn't white races in the Rust Belt that voted for Donald Trump. These were working, low, lower class, middle class white people there's some brothers and sisters out there in the Rust Belt in the country areas and all that kind of stuff. But you got to understand, it was Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton who 
pushed NAFTA, and NAFTA destroyed the manufacturing industry in those areas. If you go to those areas, you'll find empty, abandoned companies or manufacturing companies that closed their doors and went overseas for cheaper labor thanks to Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton's NAFTA initiative. Those people know about it. Most of the people over there, they are very familiar. Remember, they used to be Democrats. And then another thing, she wasn't Obama. Obama, she's, Obama knew what he was doing. Obama went down there. Let me keep going before I go to get to that part. Where voters flipped from supporting from President Barack Obama for four years ago to voting for Trump. It will also conduct an in-depth research and public polling on what it calls the Trump 12. The 12 Democrats who won races in district where Trump defeated Hillary Clinton. We want to study how did they win? How can you scale it up? Said Third Way President Jonathan Cohen and former White House aide on the bill of Clinton. Oh, so it's another Clinton night. Third Way is joining a crowd of field of Democratic organizations which are redefining themselves in reaction to the upending result of November election, trying to map out a pathway forward. Many outside the group that backed Hillary Clinton during the campaign are now vowing to become the nerve center of the anti-Trump opposition in Washington, D.C., ready to fight him on everything from cabinet nomination to key legislative battles like the upcoming showdown over the repeal and replace of Affordable Care Act. The liberal nonprofit Center of American Progress, led by Clinton loyalist Nera Tandon, oh, that name just makes me want to puke up. <laughs> Nera Tandon, I'm, I'm not going to go there. All right, um, has reorganized itself with the mission of resisting Trump legislation effort. Clinton defender David Brock has also relaunched his super PAC, American Bridge, to act as a watchdog group monitoring Trump. And the super PAC that spent close to $200 million to support Clinton, camp Clinton presidential bid, Priorities USA, has also rebranded itself as an opposition group to President-elect with no longer term goal bringing voters back to the party. First of all, let me stop there. That's one of the reasons why you freaking lost. These think tanks, these super PACs, that is one of the disease that killed this election for her. She's so depending on super PAC. Bernie Sanders say, I'm not taking no super PAC money. I'm going to get the people to finance them. If the people want to give me $3, I take the $3. If they want to give me 7 I don't need no big company or big super PAC trying to give me $50,000, half a million dollars, $5 million, because that make me owe them something. I want to owe the people. And that is one of the things that killed them because they know this about her. They call her here in New York City, uh, what they call, uh, 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 I don't like, the, the guy said, I'm just gonna repeat what he said, a corporate whore. Whenever a corporation give money to her, she gonna kiss up to them. That is the problem with American politics right now. We got too much money in politics and they're con they are controlling or they're, they're, pup, they're using our politicians as puppets and they're glad to be their puppets. And that's the problem. Now, let me get back to this. Third Way however, sees it's a $20 million initiative as a compliment. All right. Third Way however, sees it's $20 million initiative as a compliment to those efforts rather than a competitor in the same space. Um... um its state goal is a longer term effort to conduct research and analysts that will help the party dig itself out of a hole at every level of government with a greater focus on state houses than on daily skirmishes with Trump. Now, that's a positive thing. Focus on the ground level. Get your eye off of Trump. Indeed, since January 2009, this is a long article. Democrats has lost 20. Listen to this. Since January 2009, this after the first year after Obama become president. The Democrats have lost 20% of their seat, Senate seats, 25% of their House seats, almost 50% of the state house they control across the country, and more than half of the state legislature they control that year. Today there are just six states where Democrats control the governorship and both legislative chambers compare to 25 for Republicans. Cowan said the Heritage Foundation did a whole bunch of work long before Ronald Reagan was nominated. The next three years are about shaping the conversation and context of the narrative, whoever are going to be the people who contest this presidency. Oh man, dude, this thing is long. I'm not going to go on. 
anyway, bottom line is this, because this take all day. You can go read it. It's political. OK. And the topic of the article is called Democratic Party rethinks get 20 million dollars objective. All right. So first of all, 2009, Obama's first year as president. The Democrats started losing seats. One of the reasons why Democrats started losing seats because Obama himself, he kind of got kind of kind of got cocky. Can I say that? I mean, if you go back and look at the tapes of um, him trying to pass bills or trying to rally people to push Obamacare and and the Lilly Ledbetter Act and all, all these different things that he signed for, he kind of talked cocky. I won. We won. We we got the pen now. All that kind of stuff. That would kind of tick you off when you start talking like, uh, you know, start being cocky. And you wonder why a lot of Republicans say, hey, we're going to try to stop him. See, we had the majority during that time. And instead of working hard to keep the majority, we just laid back, got comfortable and said, hey, the people love us. Democrats ain't nobody going to beat us. We too, we too legit to quit. That's how it was. But when it came to election time, Obama and Obama for America, the organization that helped get Obama elected, didn't go out and campaign for the Democrats who helped push them into office. The governors who helped push them into office, the state senators, the local leaders, the U.S. senators. He didn't go out and campaign for them and he needed to do that. See, he, Bernie Sanders, even though he did not win, he was screwed out of this election. He's out there campaigning, pounding the pavement for people. That's what Obama should have did. Organizing for America should have went out and campaigned for those senators so they can retain the House seat. And every year, Obama did not go out and campaign for his constituents in, on, um, on Capitol Hill. We started losing seats and getting us to this point. Now, the Rust Belt. The Rust Belts are not friends of the Clintons anymore because for the past, we had George Bush for eight years. We had Barack Obama for eight years. That's 16 years. So it's been about 20 years since Clinton was in office. So for 20 years, they've seen a decline in their local economy to the point that they don't have jobs. They're frustrated. They're upset. And you really think that they were going to vote for Clinton? Come on now. How can you assume that we had it in the bag? Plus, Hillary Clinton thought she was too good of a two shoe to go out there on the farms to eat with them, to drink with them, to work with them, to get a beer, you know, to go bowling, go out there and shoot some ducks. Nah, she's a golden girl. They're worth one hundred and fifty million dollars. I'm not going out there in that dirt and get all dirty up. I got my white pantsuit, baby. I'm not going to do that. Barack Obama went out there and he ate with them, made corn dogs at the fair, went to the job and worked a few hours. He sat with them. He went to the prisons. You name it. He was out there. And that's why he won two turns, because even though I don't agree with him on a whole lot of stuff, the man knew how to campaign. Problem is, he didn't comp he didn't know how to campaign for others. He probably did, but didn't take the time out. And that's why we had the majority of the Republicans fighting against him. Had he did that and put them boys on blast, we would have won again, got back in the majority, and a lot more things could have got taken place for the American people. But he didn't, he didn't go f a step further. But I di digress. Clinton is not Obama. She's not as charismatic. She's not as smooth. She, she, she don't have that look, you know. And I'm just telling you, most people, they're into this image thing. And the person ain't got to know how to do crap. And if you look good and you wear a good suit and you talk a good game, they're going to vote for you. Even though you ain't going to do jack, they're still going to vote for you. So the reason the Rust Belt didn't go for Clinton is because Clinton is responsible for their economic structure, structure in the Rust Belt. Now, it was her husband that pushed and passed it with the Republicans. And the reason he pushed and passed it with the Republicans is because he wanted to continue to stay in office after he got impeached for lying under oath for messing with Monica Lewinsky. That's why you guys got to go. You got to get a good understanding of what goes on going on behind these politics. Most people don't know this stuff. He worked a deal to pass that, to pass the um, uh, to pass the um, 
uh, welfare reform and the um, crime bill all just to stay in office for the rest of his term so it don't look like he's going to get on a plane and go out like Richard Nixon. Railroading the American people. And she was a champion of that. She was not just a first lady. She was a first lady with an agenda. She wanted to be in office and run for president one day, as you can see. Now, I'm almost done. There's not much you can say about what happened. I could tell you five things that happened. Okay, number one, running a person as a person who's most qualified to be president. But when you look at her record, uh-uh, no, 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 no. She got that seat in New York because it was the easiest seat to win. A fraud could have won that election over there in Westchester County because they don't have nobody of her statue. A Clinton going to Westchester County? That would have been an easy win. Plus, John F. Kennedy got killed in the plane crash. That made it, that made it even more easy for her to win because he would have been going for that seat. So her winning the Senate seat in Westchester County for the state of New York, easy deal. Done. No challenger. Who going who gonna to go up against the Clinton name at that time? So she did it twice a year. Now, if you go look at her record, talking about checking people's record, this is how you vote, people. When you go look at her record, you find out she really didn't do much. No, no, she didn't do much. But she went with every right-wing Republican plot to go to war. She definitely did that. She's a war hawk. Now, fast forward. She decided to run for office. Got a butt whoop. All right, what I'm going to do now? Well, she wasn't going to step down. She was going to challenge Obama all the way to the convention. But, you know, it didn't look in her favor, so Obama worked the deal. She wanted to be his vice president. Nah, I can't do that. That's my boy, Joe. Joe, got, Joe gonna be my vice president. Well, I tell you what, closest to vice president is secretary of state. They worked that deal out. She became secretary of state, but she wasn't gonna do it for eight years. Why? Because she knows she wanted to run again. That's why this talk about, I didn't expect to run for president. That's why I went and did these speeches and get this money. You realize that if she knew she was gonna run uh, um, for um, um, office before those speeches, they could have, um, that's against the law. So let me go back to this, okay? So she lost. He gave her the position of Secretary of State. Four years only. She wasn't going to get reapproved for another eight years because she had the Benghazi crap all on her. So four years as Secretary of State, she failed that miserably. A lot of people got killed for no reason. People in Honduras, people in, in Palestine, people in uh, Haiti, uh, People in Libya, the Libya thing was just a disaster, all under her watch. But all people hear is two terms as a state senator, secretary of state, she's qualified. No, you got to look beyond that. What happened? She would have got an F as senator and an F as secretary of state. So why would she, why would people want to believe that she should get a, a she's going to be an A plus person as all, um, president? So these people are smart people. Just because they're in the Rust Belt, Belt and they're farmers and things, don't think look, most of them go to college, they're highly educated. Farmers are highly educated people. Don't you think they're not? People working in these manufacturing companies are highly educated people. Don't you think they're not? And with the age of the internet, we can go into a website and check your congressman voting record. And that's what people did this year. It's not like back 10, 20 years ago. People can find out whether you're talking a bunch of bull or not. They could check you out with the click of a mouse. And that's what happened, and that's why she didn't want. So first of all, you ran a person that isn't as qualified as you say she is. Number two, she's a habitual liar, and you can go from years and years and years, her line on top of line to cover up another lie. Uh, scandals up the core, whether the scandals were true or not, most of them wasn't, but the point is she was in those scandals. Number three, the email scandals, <sighs> 30,000 deleted from her computer when she had a server in her house, which is against the law. She broke laws. Comey said she broke the law, but he said, we're not going to do nothing. We're going to slap her on the wrist. She didn't know no better. Favoritism. So I can go on and on. I can go on and on. Second thing. She's a pandering candidate. She'll do whatever you need her to do. She'll nay nay. She'll, uh, she'll, she'll do the wobble. She'll talk about Pokemon Go. She'll do anything to try to get you to think she's helped. Now, I'm not going to go too much further into this because I got a video series telling you everything that 
on what was wrong with this campaign. I told you, go back and look at my series, Dumb DNC Mistakes 2016. Dumb DNC Mistake, because I can be here all day long talking about why they left. Now, if you want to pay somebody, pay me. I take the $20 million because I can go into more detail on what caused this election to fail. But hey, I, I take $2 million, whatever, you know, give me $2, I'll take it. But anyway, there are multiple reasons why she failed. A lot of it is on the surface. You don't need to be spending unnecessary money to dig deep into her to find out why she lost. She just wasn't, number one, she wasn't a bum. That was the mistake of 2000. And, um, 2000. Um, what you call is not, what you call is not Bill Clinton. Al Gore was not Bill Clinton. So what make you think Al Gore was going to win that election? He is not Bill Clinton. Hillary Clinton is not Obama. So I can go through multiple things that caused this election to fail. Multiple things. The rigging of the election. The closing of the primaries where independents can't vote. That was a huge mistake. That right there, if you were to open up the primaries to everybody, where they can vote for a Democrat in huge numbers, then we wouldn't have never lost that election. So the reason that she lost is because, just keep it real, she sucked, she sucked, she sucked. She sucked as a campaigner. She didn't know how to campaign and she didn't know where to campaign. And unfortunately, Donald Trump had somebody that knew how to do it better than her. So. Stop the blaming. I told you there's, there's not much for you to know why she lost. The point is, it's too easy. Go and watch my D dumb DNC series. I got more I'm going to add to it. My next one I'm going to add to it is the super delicates, something that they shouldn't do. But these are the reasons why she lost. Just some simple things why she lost. I told you in the dumb DNC mistake series, and I'm telling you now, when it comes to the Rust Belt, you got to understand that NASA destroyed the Rust Belt. You gotta understand, we had a Democratic wall in the Rust Belt for eight years because Obama said he was gonna change those trade laws. Trump said the same thing. Neither one of them was gonna do it. Obama didn't change the trade laws. Matter of fact, he was trying to put in a, one worse than NAFTA, and that was the TPP. Trump said he's gonna do it. He killed the TPP, I, I thank him for that. But he's not gonna do no more different than Obama, he's more like a copycat. He's going to take what you have, scrap it, and add a couple things to it and say it's his. But the point is, eight years of Obama, eight years of Bush, 16 years it took for those rust belts to be destroyed economically because those factories closed down and went overseas. And that was because of the Clinton administration. And the reason why those people were willing to vote for Obama, because he said he was going to change it. Hillary Clinton says she's going to change it. They're going to say, how are you going to change it when it was you and your husband who started it in the first place? That right there alone is the simple reason why she got whooped in the Rust Belt. That's it. You don't need to spend $20 million. You don't need to spend $2,000. I give you that one for free. The reason she lost in the Rust Belt is because she's a Clinton. She was married to Bill Clinton, and not to harp on Bill Clinton, but Bill Clinton helped the Republicans pass NAFTA. Why? Again, I'll tell you why. He got impeached, but he wanted to stay in the rest of his terms. So he worked in fin the finishing touches to NAFTA, the crime bill, and the health care, I mean, um, the um, welfare reform. Worked with the Republicans to push that through. It hurt the black community for the health um, welfare bill, bill through a lot of parents with kids in poverty. And those kids did what they need to do to help take care of their family. A lot of them got involved with crime and drugs and they end up going to jail, which brings us the crime bill that put them in jail for some of the stupidest things for long terms. And then last but not least, NAFTA took jobs overseas from the Rust Belt, leaving those people drained economically. So, no, they trusted Trump, even though he's a bald-faced liar, he ain't going to do jack, he's a con man, he's a salesman, he's a marketer, he ain't going to do jack crap for them. Hoping he do, but the way I, um, nine times ten, I don't. I try to give people benefit of the doubt, but nine times ten, I doubt it. He's a lying con artist. 
He's not going to do it. Obama, he didn't do it. And he was going to come up with something that was even worse to kill the rest of the country when it comes to trade with the TPP. But for as Clinton saying she was going to do something about trade, the people in the Rust Belt is not going to hear it because the very reason they're in the situation where they are right now economically is because of a Clinton. Bill Clinton and her pushed that. And that's why the people in the Rust Belt didn't vote for him. As you heard in the article, the same people voted for Obama, voted for Trump. Why? Because they heard the language of we're going to fix this mess that we're in. I'm Bob TV. Peace.